Good afternoon, folks. It's Freddie Vasquez. This is Basement Politics on Filter. Today, I want to talk about the article that came out this morning in the Yonkers Ledger regarding Tasha Diaz, the majority leader, and her consulting company. in communication uh, that is owned by Frank Jarrett, son of Zahi Jarrett, political operative who has been convicted of political corruption, pled guilty to election fraud. And I've been talking about this for a long time. So finally, we're getting some... Um, some real information, some real actual evidence here of the corruption that's going on here in the city of Yonkers. Uh, the majority leader, Tasha Diaz, um, and her consulting company, her manager, campaign manager, Frank Jerris and Zahi Jerris, uh, who own a company called ACES Consultant and Communications LLC, uh, was set to receive a contract for $30,000 for a six month period to provide mailers create and distribute mailers on behalf of the, of the Yonker City Council. The problem with that is that Frank Jerris is managing Tasha Diaz, his father, Zahi Jerris, as well. And they're also managing other elected officials who sit on the council. And that's a problem. That's a huge problem here. And that is why our elected officials uh, don't seem to represent the people here in the city of Yonkers. So uh, by seven in the morning uh, today, I had uh, about four or five text messages with people sharing this article. Um, I knew something was going to be coming out as of yesterday. I didn't know what, but I heard it was going to be big. And I think this is very big. And I think this is very explosive. And I think that an investigation needs to be the result of uh, this article that has come out in the Yonkers Ledger. Let's take a look uh, at the article here. Yonkers Ledger, shout out to you guys doing a great job here in the city of Yonkers, uh, bringing the truth to the people of Yonkers uh, with integrity. Uh, Yonkers City Council Majority Leader Tasha Diaz attempted to award a $30,000 city contract to a government employee that also operates as her political campaign manager. The plot eventually discovered and rejected by the approvals board of which she is a voting member. Nevertheless, the lack of disclosure of these ties leaves the duel exposed to several penalties. As defined by the city charter, all non-competitively bid contracts shall be awarded by the Board of Contracts and Supply. The mayor or his deputy preside over his appointment, uh, appointed city engineer and commissioner of finance, together with the elected city council president, uh, and she's also connected to Zahi Jerris and Frank Jerris and majority leader in these biweekly meetings. Their meetings review dozens of proposed contracts across all departments, and they consequently decide on up to hundreds of thousands of dollars of funding. Actually, more than that, uh, more than that. Clustered is getting almost 800000 alone. Um for each, all contracts, requests, list of vendors, requesters, terms of service, and a brief scope of work. On September 26, 2023, meeting of this board, the fourth item on the agenda contained an anoint, uh, uh, annotation that the city council sponsored item was pulled from consideration at their own request. So they pulled this real quick. They like, hold up, wait a minute. The contract named ACES Consulting uh and communications LLC as a new vendor to the city council effective immediately. Specifically, this proposal tasked the consulting firm to provide and design governmental mailers for the city council. That's right. Zahi Jarris is going to be behind governmental mailers for the city council. The cost for this six month contract listed professional fees in the sum of thirty thousand uh, dollars with an option to renew drawn from the city's uh, budget general fund. However, a vote on this item never occurred when members discovered who owned ACES Consultant. But they should have known this way before they even had this, uh, you know, were even considering giving this individual a contract. 
They should have known this. Aces Consulting and Communications LLC uh, was recently incorporated on July 31st, 2023 by Frank Frankie Jerris, the 22-year-old law school student who is from a prominent family with deep ties to City Hall. Frankie, along with his mother, Seda, and father, Zahi, are all registered to vote at the same address as ACES Consulting. Frankie and his mother, Seda, both have employment within city government and are members in the Yonkers Democratic Committee. And that's a problem. That's something that I have been mentioning here in this, uh, on my podcast. Zahi Jarvis is very active in the Yonkers Democratic Committee, and so is his son, as well as his wife. They're ward leaders. And that's a big deal. That's very important. Um, uh, Seda has held government positions across numerous departments for years, and her son Frankie became the secretary for the Human Rights Commission in March of this year. Like many in government, they are also active in their local political party. Seda serves as the fifth ward Democratic co-leader, and Frankie like likewise as the second ward co-leader. But they live at the same address. Is that possible? The Jarrett family's political interests do not end there. In fact, Frankie's father, Zahi, may be the most prominent political persona in Yonkers. Zahi made a name for himself as the youngest chairman of the Yonkers GOP in the 1990s. And in 98, he pled guilty to election fraud charges. He pled guilty to election fraud charges. And this is uh, something else I spoke about. Uh, on this podcast. A little over a decade later, a federal court sentenced Zahi Jarris to prison for bribery and extortion when he paid a city council member to flip their vote on the Ridge Hill Shopping Center proposal. Now, that is very eerily similar to the flip-flop by our current majority leader, Tasha Diaz, on the Affordable Housing Ordinance back in 2021. Do you remember that? She was for it from the very beginning, supporting it, one of the uh, you know strongest supporters of increasing the ordinance to 20%. She initially voted yes, then the mayor vetoed it. And when it came time for the council to override the mayor's veto so they can go ahead and increase the ordinance, they had the power to do it. All they had to do was vote the same Tasha Diaz surprised everyone in the council chamber that day and decided to go along with the mayor killing the housing ordinance. That affected people who are in need of affordable housing. There is affordable housing crisis. And although they like to make you believe that they've increased the housing stock, that's not necessarily true. They play with words. Many of the affordable apartments that have been built here in the city of Yonkers are for seniors. And many of the construction projects that have been done here in regards to affordable housing have been just renovating the ones that were already here. And in t at times, they have gone back with less units than there were initially. So I don't believe that they have increased the housing ordinance and leaving it at 10 percent only benefits the developers who support Tasha Diaz. Zahi has since returned from prison and back to the political arena, and his son Frankie appears to be following in turn. And I said this, Zahi, what are you doing here? You're putting your son in, 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 in a predicament here. He's the bag man, and you're going to get your son sent to prison like you. This year, multiple political campaign operates under the management of Frankie, most notably that of the city of the council member for the third district majority leader, Tasha Diaz, and he has always been her campaign manager uh, along with his father, Zahi. The first term for Tasha has generated numerous headlines. She was a deciding vote that allowed the mayor's veto to override an expansion of the affordable housing ordinance. Then she unexpectedly became the majority leader, only serving on the council for two years when a power struggle ousted the most senior member, Corazon Pineda Isaac. So people knew she was going to get some kind of reward for that, right? We anticipated some benefit for her uh, not, you know, or changing her vote on the affordable housing ordinance, right? And lo and behold, she became the majority leader, surprising many people, uh, pissing off John Rubel, which is why they ended up naming John Rubel, the councilman for the 4th District, the majority whip because that also comes with a little bit more money, right? That's what it's all about. Later that year, her fiery speech during the meeting to extend term limits contributed to the rowdiness of the crowd that saw community advocate Hector Santiago punched in the face by a police officer. 
And now it seems she faces scrutiny for her part in a scheme to defraud the government of, of taxpayer money. A, as majority leader of the city council and voting member of the five person board of contracts and supply, she alone had the authority to add this item to the agenda and bring the $30,000 contract for her campaign manager to vote. So she alone had the authority to add this item. So she knew who owned that company. She knew very well who owned it. I spoke about it in a podcast and they watched my podcast. So if they didn't know before my podcast on that company, ACES Consulting and Communications, they knew after. The oft-ignored uh, section of the city of Yonkers Charter outlines numerous offenses related to awarding and receiving public money as a city employee. A, a general concept conveys that all such enrichment is forbidden. Forbidden. The charter enumerates this in few ways. C uh, 1A 13, interest in contracts with the city. C 1A 7, financial benefits and gifts. C 1A 11, avoidance of conflicts. And C 1A 6, general ethics standard. However, not all of these violations fully materialized because officials discovered the fraud before they were awarded the contract. Meaning, COI employee Frankie Jarris never got the money, so never formally breached most of these ethic rules. But the attempt was there. It was only because we have now been keeping an eye on things. More and more of us have been holding them accountable, following along with these meetings, which is why it's important to do so. So shout out to the Yonkers Ledger for being on top of it. Nevertheless, violations related to this solicitation of funds are applicable. At no time did Jerris or the sponsor of this contract and his political client, council member Tasha Diaz, the sponsor of the contract and his political client, council member Tasha Diaz, ever disclosed the ownership of ACES Consulting and that it and that itself is a clear violation. Any city officers or employee who has, will have, or later acquires an interest in any actual or potential contract with the city shall publicly disclose the nature and extent of that interest. The lack of disclosure may imply ignorance of the ethics code, but Jerris' legal education and his family's history in government betrays that defense. So they can't say we didn't know. They knew better. They knew better. And the majority leader's office has a competent staff, including lawyers, to advise on these conflicts. Lastly, another violation potentially exists related to the origin of this ruse. One person asks uh, the other to participate in this transfer of government funds. And that act, knowing its ethical breaches, is called inducement. At this point, uh, since the... Uh, Covert transfer of taxpayer funds to a city employee political operative was thwarted. Some may consider this matter resolved, but it's not. Nevertheless, the lingering potential violations still warrant investigation. Therefore, a thorough inquiry by the Inspector General, Liam McLaughlin, and an independent review by the Board of the Sleepy Board of Ethics provide the necessary function to resolve this questionable action. Through this comprehensive, honest, and transparent process, other improprieties may be uncovered and justly punished. And in doing so, the city of Yonkers may find that history repeats itself in regards to dirty money between a Jerris and a member of its city council. So again, this is nothing uh, new right here, folks. Nothing new at all. So this is the meeting here uh, where it showed here the agenda on the top here aces consulting and communication llc thirty thousand uh, dollars with the option to renew for additional six month period uh, consulting and media related communication services to provide and design governmental ma uh, mailers for the city of yonkers and that's a problem because that individual frankie jerris is very well known for using the internet to harass to threaten and bully people who oppose their candidates one of those individuals has been my family, or myself and my family, my wife specifically. They have used the Yonkers news wires and I have taken screenshots of Frankie Jarris on the news wire, utilizing the news wire in posts that were about me, negative posts that were full of lies. And they have been doing this for two years. So this is what they do. This is their communication business, right? Anyone that speaks out against uh, their candidates, their agenda, their goals, his father, they're going to go and attack. 
and they have done so. They're disgusting. They also use uh, the Yonkers voice as well, and they create these uh, fake pages, and many people are aware of this. Many people have been the victims of their attacks, their harassment, their bullying, their threats, their lies, and they also utilize government agencies and departments like the building department to target people's businesses, target people's homes, giving them violations for whatever reason they can find when they go there surprisingly. So this is a big issue and it needs to be investigated because this guy is bad news for the city of Yonkers and many people have suffered as a result of this individual being involved. So here you see it, ACES Consulting and Communication LLC. In Corporation Day, July 31st of this year, Agent Frank Jarris, and it has his address there, 30, 340 uh, Wincliffe, uh, that's road, Scarsdale, New York. So this guy is over here in Scarsdale, New York, very wealthy individuals trying to steal more taxpayer money from a struggling city that's finding it hard to get money in order to fix up our schools and to finish the one school that they're trying to build over there as we see more delays happening with the contractor. And so these individuals are just greedy folks, greedy, greedy, greedy individuals, and they manipulate our city council members. Tasha Diaz, uh, they're behind Lakeisha Collins Bellamy. She thanked Frankie Jarris specifically on the night that she won her election. She thanked Frankie Jarris specifically. Now that's a problem. Does that have anything to do with the legislation she introduced to extend the term limits once again? Was he involved in that? And so that is why we need to investigate this guy and get him out of Yonkers politics. This is a history lesson for you folks who may not know. Two Yonkers polls convicted of corruption. A former Yonkers councilwoman and the one-time leader of the city's Republican Party were found guilty Thursday of corruption when jurors rejected a claim that it was a case of romance, not vote buying. So Zahi Jarris, right, who saw to it that his own relative, his cousin, Sandy Anabi, went to jail. She actually went to jail for six years. He only went to jail for four years. His defense was that he was in love with her and that's why he was giving her money. That's why he was paying for her Mercedes. That's why he was helping her buy property. But the reality is, is that he was buying her vote. Like Tasha Diaz, she was initially set on voting one way, but ultimately changed her decision the last minute for whatever reason. Well, in the case of Sandy Anabi, they discovered what that reason was. Now, in the case of Tasha Diaz, we know what that reason was, but the federal agents, the FBI, for some reason are yet to discover it. And hopefully they are investigating and something will come of this because she needs to be in handcuffs for what she's done here in the city of Yonkers and other individuals as well. They are the ones that are helping this gentrification uh, you know, happen here. They are the ones. Jerry's claimed that in court that he showered Anabi with money and other gifts worth $174,000 because he fell in love with her. He offered as evidence emails he said he sent her in which he uh, uh, pinned to be her boyfriend, although he was married. He was married to say to Jerry's, right? But he tried to lie. He concocted these fake emails and they were determined to be, you know, fraudulent emails because the, they were um, created, you know, after this all happened. Right. So this is what they do. They try these computer tricks and stuff. Uh, you know, they utilize the computer, the Internet to attack people uh, um, and harass people as well. So they're very savvy or maybe not so savvy uh, with their um, computer skills. Ex Yonkers councilwoman gets six years in prison. So Sandy and Nabi went to jail for six years for this corruption uh, um, charge or, or conviction. This was the result of Zahi Jerris. A lot of members in the Jordanian community were upset with him, especially because he didn't take the fall completely. He let the woman take the most of the fall. She went to jail for six years and they said that he knew better. She was naive. He knew better. He manipulated her. He influenced her and then eventually bribed her with material things in order to get what he wanted for developers. The Rich Hill uh, project, right? The Rich Hill that we see now that seems dead. I don't know if it's coming back to life, right? But again, same thing with Tasha Diaz. The same exact scenario with Tasha Diaz has happened here. So why isn't this being investigated? Why aren't we seeing uh, Tasha Diaz and Zahi Jarris being brought up on charges again? As you can see, Zahi Jarris is very well familiar with the um, 
developers. And for getting Sandy Anabi to change her vote, that developer, Forrest Ratner, actually gave him a consulting job, a $60,000 a year consulting job, right? And then when they went to trial, they said they had no idea who Zahi Jerez was. They didn't know his history. Had they known, they would never have hired him. Again, FBI, United States Attorney's uh, Office, Southern District of New York, former head of Yonkers Republican Party, pleads guilty in White Plains to federal court uh, in federal court to payroll tax fraud. So he was committing payroll tax fraud, uh, uh, tax evasion, not paying his taxes. He was also convicted of selling pounds of marijuana. So why are elected officials and judges, it's not just council members, it's judges as well, county legislators, why are they hiring this man? And they're not really hiring them, right? He's choosing them. He's the one that's choosing them. That's Zahi Jarrus right there with the cigar in his mouth, right? Because what he does is he finds some gullible individual, let's say like Atasha Diaz, that's willing to do whatever to get ahead. They have no other outlook in life, right? And he manipulates them. He gets them to a point where, you know, uh, they start to feel good about themselves. He starts putting a little money into them. Look at the changes from uh, Tasha Diaz went, the transformation from before she was a councilwoman till now. That's the kind of people he finds. And then he gets paid through the fundraising. So it's not like Tasha Diaz had to come up money, right, and pay them first so they can manage her campaign. No, he said, don't worry about it. I'll get myself paid. We're going to do fundraisers. And then your campaign is going to pay me from that, right? So that's what he does. So he gets all these rich people, all these developers that he knows to do fundraisers for her, brings in all the money, and he funnels it into his pocket, right? And I heard that there was a beef over that at one point because Tasha Diaz was like, that's my money, right? That always going to cause a problem between people. She started seeing all that money coming in into her campaign, and she said, that's my money, right? So there was a big problem with that. Uh, money at one point. And so they had to kind of check her, right? So they act like they were not going to support her and they started putting out negative um, information about her. Tasha, where do you think I got some of this information about you? How do you think I know about the fact that you assaulted your stepdad over money, you and your sister in the lobby of your building? How do I know that? How did I know that right away? Do you have to think about that, Tasha? They will throw you under the bus. And if I were you, I'd get to talking first. Make your deal. You don't want to end up like Sandy and Nabi doing more time than Zahi Jarris. I know that's going to piss you off. It would piss me off. Well, after Zahi Jarris did his four years in federal prison and came back out a two-time felon, he got right back into politics, right? Zahi Jarris returns in Romano campaign for judge. So it's not just uh, council members or county legislators, it's judges. So how is it that, you know, our judges, those who are there to uphold the law, to decide whether or not you committed a crime or not, whether you guilty of a crime or not, are associating with known criminals, convicted felons? How can we trust in our judicial system here if this is the case? They don't care about the law. They don't care about you when you come before them. They just care about advancing their career. That's a $200,000 a year job. Easy job. You could run your real estate empire as well. It's a perfect win-win. Yonkers affordable housing ordinance killed as city council lets Mayor Vito stand. Yonkers city council turned down the chance Tuesday, and this is from 2021, about October, almost a year ago, uh, almost two years ago, Tuesday, uh, to overturn Mayor Mike Spano's veto of the affordable housing ordinance. The council passed in June. The ordinance would have doubled the percentage of affordable housing units required in residential developments with 100 or more units to 20%. Three months ago, we had a super majority that supported this very important legislation that affects every Yonkers resident, said former uh, pre uh, council president Mike Cater. Yesterday, you know, the will, the desire to continue fighting for Yonkers residents wasn't there by the same people that supported it. And he's referring to Tasha Diaz. Makes you wonder what happened. Yeah, what happened? It was a game from the beginning, Mike. 
When he vetoed the ordinance in July, Spano said the increased requirement of affordable housing units would drive away developers and said he worked with the council to create an ordinance that would work. They're still working on that over two years later. Council members Tasha Diaz and John Rubel supported the legislation in June, but voted not to reconsider the ordinance on Tuesday. That left just three council members in support of taking up the veto, Coraz, uh, Cater, Corazon, and uh, Sinead Williams, who also uses Zahi Jerris. It's right. It's almost like an intentional stall tactic, Cater said. That way, these developments get approved under the old ordinance. And once all the space is used up, then they'll try to solve the problem. And this is why Cater was thrown under the bus by his own cousin, Zahi Jerris and Frankie Jerris. Cater was supporting the 20 percent he wanted. He was calling out those who were against it. They knew that he wanted to run for mayor. And so they had to think quick. And so utilizing one of their news outlets out here that they control and manipulate, they put out an article about Mike Cater and quid quo pro, a quid pro quo. And we all know what happens then. The council sent a letter over to Liam McLaughlin to investigate. And that's exactly what he did. And he's still doing to this day, almost two years or over two years later, actually. So will the council, right, write a letter to Liam McLaughlin and ask them to investigate Tasha Diaz and this attempt to extort or shake down or steal taxpayer money from the city of Yonkers. Will we see a letter from the city council requesting this investigation? Because it needs to be investigated. This is the problem, but we're not gonna see that. I guarantee you we won't see that because Zahi Jerris controls the majority of the council. The only reason they wrote that letter on Mike Cater is because Zahi Jerris controls a majority of the council. And that's what he wanted them to do. And that's what they did. But they're not going to write a letter here. They're not going to look to investigate Tasha Diaz. It is up to us to continue to speak on it. And I know that there's more articles coming out. And I can't wait. And I can't wait. The House of Cards is going to come crumbling down. And I'm going to be here to watch it. No matter how much you guys come and attack me and my wife especially, that just motivates me to continue. That just lights a fire under my ass. That's it. That's it. So they lied. They flip flop. This is what Tasha Diaz said. For the past 12 months, I've been harassed by so-called activists and community leaders when in reality they are antichrist and extortionist. <laughs> You're trying to steal taxpayer money from the city of Yonkers, $30,000, which are campaign managers. It is clear that these people have targeted me. A woman of color. Okay, so you want to play the race card. Well, what about uh, this woman of color here, Tasha, that your POS managers there utilize this other loser to attack constantly for two years? What about that black woman that does a much better job that can dance circles around you in anything that you do and that she does? Any day of the week, there's a much bigger asset to the city of Yonkers than you will ever be. What about that black woman? You don't give a fuck about her, do you? So we don't give a fuck about you. Straight like that. And I hope you go to jail. And I can't wait till you do. I cannot wait. However, I will not allow any veiled threats or intimidation tactics to affect my, represent my representation of the people. Yeah, like the intimidation tactics you used the night of their term extension meeting against a group of women, Latina women. You know, we don't care about your crocodile tears. I have faced badgering and harassment at community events. Really? Because we have video of you cursing at people. We have audio of you cursing at your colleagues, other council member. That's going to come out soon. I can't wait. I can't wait till everyone hears how you speak to uh, council members in City Hall. I have been assaulted at food distributions to the less fortunate where no one was arrested for that. And why should they be? You weren't arrested for assaulting your stepdad. These individuals have attempted to extort me into voting their way or on key issues before the council by threatening me with a primary and continued harassment. I did support to keep the affordable housing at 10 percent at for the time being at 10 percent. We ensure our communities to have guaranteed access to affordable housing. How does keeping it at 10 percent guaranteed that our community has access to affordable housing? Please back that statement up. Please back that up. You cannot. 
The fact that while Yonkers makes up 20 percent of Westchester's population, it makes up a majority of the affordable housing in Westchester signifies that our current affordable housing is working better than anywhere else in the country. That's because we have the most need. We have the most people in poverty of any uh, city in Westchester County. That's not a good thing. Where are the jobs that you promised everyone? Where's the improvement to the school so our kids can get a great education so they too can succeed in life and not have to be cheating to get ahead like you? Once a better plan is figured out, I look forward to passing it. That has not come to fruition yet. I did vote to extend term limits for the office of mayor and city council because she voted yes on that. She wouldn't vote to uh, increase the affordable housing here in the city of Yonkers, but she'll vote to extend term limits for herself and others so they can keep their jobs, right? The consensus is Yonkers is moving in the right direction. Therefore, I want to put the right solely in the residents of this city, whether or not their elected officials should continue to represent them. I represent the voices of the people in this city today, not the ones 21 years ago that voted yes to a referendum. So she's basically saying to the people who voted to keep the term limits at two, that's not who she represents. Although they still live here in the city of Yonkers, Tasha, and many people still wanted them to stay at two, but you didn't care what they had to say. You didn't listen to them. You were only listening to Zahi Jarris. That's the only person you ever listen to when it comes to politics. He tells you what to do every single time you go up to vote. So after she flip-flopped, she let her people down, her constituents down, she was named majority leader, which comes with more money and a title that I'm sure she takes a lot of pride in. And so I have been speaking about this for a very long time. It's nothing new. What this article does is just validates the things that I've had said on my podcast, that Zahi Jarris and Tasha Diaz are corrupt. They do not belong in our government, and Tasha Diaz needs to go this year in her reelection. Vote Hector Santiago in District 3. Many of you already know him from the community. He's out there, unlike Tasha Diaz. And I don't want to hear about no food that she distributes or that how she helped 100 kids because that's not her doing. She's not coming out of her pocket. That's not her idea. She could care less. But it looks good, especially during election season. I don't like the fakeness. That's not real. It's not genuine. She doesn't belong at the food distributions. That's why they have the nonprofits. Where she belongs is in the city council chambers, making sure that there's an affordable housing ordinance that will help ease this housing crisis that we have. She needs to be in city hall, making sure that we're finding the money to improve the schools and that that new school that's been delayed now, that was supposed to open up this year, will open up next year because we need that one and two more. That's what she needs to be doing. And if she's not focusing on that, she's not doing her job. She can go work for a nonprofit if she wants. We need people who are going to be doing their jobs in city council that are going to understand what they're doing and that are not going to be bribed or corrupted by individuals in the background who have their own agendas to enrich themselves and their developer friends. That's all Tasha Diaz has been doing. That's all many of them have been doing. And it's time for change. They don't represent you. They don't care about you. I don't care how many book bags they give out. It's all a scam. They do the same thing in Mount Vernon. They do the same thing in Port Chester. It's all a scam to get people to vote for them. Giving you a book bag is not going to do much for you. Giving you uh, some food, because a lot of people that go there don't really have that serious need. They just want to save money. But cool, more power to you. OK, because a lot of that food is taken by our elected officials anyway. It's taken by people who run those uh, food distributions. They go through the food first and take out the best of the best. And that's from volunteers. They've said this and many of them have walked out on it because of that. So I don't want to hear about that stuff. That's not that's not doing anything. OK, it's all about getting people to vote for them. That's why they do it. It's all about getting their information, getting them to sign petitions and getting them to vote or sign off on their blank ballots that they go and get them. Many of them are impartial. They don't really care about voting, but they just go there to get whatever is given out for free. That's it. And if they got to sign a piece of paper, so be it. And they know that. And that's why they do it. If there was no incentive, there was no reward for doing that for them. If they didn't get any votes that way, they didn't get petition signatures, there was nothing other than standing there to help people, she would not be there. That's a fact. That's a fact. 
right? I don't want to hear that nonsense. If she cared about people, she would have increased the housing ordinance. If she cared about the people there that are in line for food and those kids that are getting book bags, she would be making sure that kids have the money or the school district has the necessary money, that we're easing the crowded classrooms by assuring that there are more schools being built and that they're being uh, opened on time. That's what she should be doing. Giving someone a free book bag is a temporary thing. They'll need a new one next year, and it will not have changed their lives in any significant way. I don't want to hear that nonsense. Save that. Okay? Because this is what they do when you speak about this. This is what you, they do when you call them out, when you tell people the truth. They try to get anyone they can to align against you. They'll have these individuals do stuff like this. Now I'm a terrorist. Now I'm a terrorist who is, uh, you know, um, uh, 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 t- teaching my kids to be terrorists. I'm anti-Semitic. This is what this man's calling me. But he has an issue with me, right? It's all about me. Yet and still, he posts a picture of my wife. That's purposely done. Because they want to harass her to get to me. That's what they do. So she talks about black women, and so does the city council president. No disrespect, but y'all not have stood up for this black woman that you know is amazing that has done amazing things. She don't just talk about it. She's about it. She's done things. You've seen it. You've seen it. People have seen it. Volunteering her time for free to help black, young black girls, young Latina girls, providing them with things that they're not giving them at the schools. She's done that. And what does she get for it? She gets harassed. She gets attacked. She gets threatened. She gets, uh, you know, retaliation at the workplace. They seek to try and fire her. Who do you think is doing that? Who do you think is behind that? The majority leader, I'm sure. The chairwoman of the education committee, along with her buddy, Zahid Jarris, the ones who tried to extort $30,000 from the city of Yonkers and more if we didn't catch him. A Jordanian man. Why do you think there's so many Jordanian individuals working in the city of Yonkers? Public schools, especially. Many principals. Yet, they're not as large of a population as the Latinos and Blacks. So it's not proportion. It's disproportion. Why? Because they get uh, advantages. They get perks. Family and friends network, many of them. And many of them love and support Tasha for whatever damn reason. And maybe it's because of Zahid Jarrett's. And so they support her. They put their money to her. But they don't care about affordable housing because many have businesses and big homes on the west uh, east side. That's who she represents, the people with money, because they provide her money. And so colluding with some of them in the schools, they try to get my wife terminated. If you compare her record before she became employed in the Yonkers Public Schools, compared to the two, a little over two years she's been in Yonkers Public School, you would think it's two different people. Her actions don't reflect what they write about her. And so you can do that if you want, but I'm not going to stay quiet. It's happened to too many people. And people need to know about this. People need to know the disgusting things that certain individuals will do. They don't care if a woman has kids, has a family. They don't care how hard she's worked, how many years she's put into it. You oppose us and what we're doing here. You oppose a certain elected official. You speak truth. You out them. This is what we're going to do to you. But it doesn't matter because that's not going to stop the truth from being spoken. It's not going to stop Freddie Vasquez again. It's only going to motivate me. It's only going to motivate me. And many of you have a lot of things to hide. But they're going to surely be coming out. We're going to continue to go. We're going to continue to rock and roll. I don't care. It's not going to stop me. You're not going to try and hold me hostage by threatening my wife. Precision strategies. Look how many, how much money they've made. Precision Strategies is the other consulting campaign company uh, that's run by Zahid Jerris. He's used that company as well to manage a lot of our elected officials, including Lakeisha Collins Bellamy, Nader Sage, Shanae Williams. Let's look at our. Shanae Williams here.
for county legislator, which is she's running for, right? She's going to win. She knows it. She's very confident. Very confident. She went after a black man, Zahi Jarrett. I'm sorry, uh, <laughs> Chris Johnson, the guy who held the District 16 seat before her. Just to get him out any which way. The man has a family also, has kids as well. She doesn't care. She doesn't have a family. She don't have kids. She's hooking up her new boo thing with grant money. But she's not saying anything about Vidak Gashi, who's doing the same thing as Chris Johnson. She's not going over to the his apartment over there in the west side in Manhattan to do a news report on it. She's not asking for an investigation. She hasn't mentioned anything of it. Why? Because he is a part of the Zahi Jarris group of elected officials. Shanae Williams, campaign literature, precision strategies, 340, Wincliffe Road, same address as ACES, consulting and communications. She paid $8,979. This is how he makes money. Shaking down developers, shaking down business owners. That's why we have not seen businesses, more businesses here. That's why we have not seen more big box stores here. They got to pay and they don't want to pay. Many people know this. The ones you see now are the ones that are willing to pay. May 30th, 2023, she paid Forty four hundred, almost forty five hundred for campaign literature in June of this year. Another almost uh, forty five hundred in campaign literature. Is that the same kind of literature and mailers that they wanted to uh, produce for the city council? Again, this year, March. I'm so yeah, January, March of this year, twentieth, two thousand dollars campaign literature, nine hundred thirty seven dollars campaign literature. What is all this campaign literature? Why is so many transactions? Why not just one or two transactions and buy enough? That's, that's how they make, that's how he makes his money. And Shanae Williams will do whatever he says. She represents District 1 where all the development is going on. Where everything is being gentrified. Where most of the blacks are being kicked out of. But she's not black, she's Jamaican. Get it right. So you see her in bed with Zahi Jarris and Frankie Jarris. Let's look at Nader Sage. Precision Strategies. Thousand dollars here, two thousand dollars. But let's see, forty-five thousand dollars in o October last year, twenty twenty-two. Nader Sage paid Precision Strategy, Zahi Jerris, and Frank Jerris forty-five thousand. Another twenty-nine thousand on the same day. Two different transactions. Sixty-seven hundred. The next month. In September of that year, 5,000, 2,600, 2,000, 1,000. This is how he makes his money. So how do you think these individuals are going to vote? How do you think they're going to decide on different things that affect you and I? It's all based on what Zahi says. This is how he makes his money. Shaking down the donors who donate to Nader Sage, and then he takes that money out through his company. He legitimizes it that way. It's money laundering. You want to do business in Yonkers? You want me to get the city council members to do what uh, you need? Then you have to donate to these campaigns. Then they're going to hire me and, or my son. And that's how we're going to get the money from the developer's pockets to their pocket. That's what it's all about. 
And so they have to do what their donors say because their donors are not going to give them any money otherwise. That's what it's all about. And this is why there needs to be an investigation. There needs to be a serious investigation into this. Did I spell her name wrong? Let's take a look at the city council president. What is my one? That's type two. Oh, nope, nothing. Okay, nothing there. But she's used Rose Press Inc. $10,000. And if you have been following the podcast and the Mike Cater lawsuit, you know that Rose Press Inc. is one of the defendants in that lawsuit. Rose Press Inc. is owned by the brother-in-law of the mayor. And so a lot of money goes there. Westchester Manor, $3,000. Fairmount, East Carolina PR. What is that? Oh, public relations. Fairmount Zupa, $3,000. Keisha Collins Bellamy gave herself twenty five hundred. Up oh, Precision Strategies, twenty four fifty. There we go. Precision Strategies. That's Zahi Jerris. That's Zahi Jerris. So there we go. There is a, a connection. There's the connection. All you need is one. Jet Blue. Hmm. She spent money on Jet Blue. Maybe flying around. Uh, overhead, over Yonkers with a banner saying vote for Lakeisha. I don't know. I don't know. She paid the Yonkers Democratic Committee 900 bucks. Hopefully that wasn't for an endorsement. Just kidding. Just kidding. And so you can look all this up and you can connect the dots. And this is what I and many others do by contributors. So this is uh, contributions by contributors. I just thought I'd try Precision Strategies. Oh, okay. You got some stuff here. Precision Strategies gave $500 to the Yonkers uh, Democratic Committee. Uh, Precision Strategies, uh, again, to Yonkers Democratic Committee. Precision Strategies donated to Shanae Williams. Uh, Best for Yonkers, Precision Strategies. Friends of Tasha Diaz, uh, Precision Strategies. Shanae Williams, Yonkers Democratic Committee. Yonkers Democratic Committee. But weren't you a Republican, Zahi? Why are you giving money to the Democrats? All Democrats, Shanae, Lakeisha, and Tasha are three black women on the council, the super majority, where we had so much hope for. But we were let down because although they were black women, they were led by a Jordanian man who owed his loyalty to the developers. They're the ones that are paying them. This is a money-making scheme, folks. This is a money-making scheme. Politics is money-making. It's big business for our elected officials here in the city of Yonkers. And you can see that um, their connection with Zahi Jerris should be very concerning. We should call for an investigation. Liam McLaughlin, where's the investigation? Corazon Pineda Isaac, why don't you write a letter? Anthony Moranti, why don't you write a letter? Let's go. Let's get it popping. That needs to be investigated. Zahi Jarris needs to get out of politics. Why does his son, Frankie Jarris, have a job with the city? Why was that not given to someone else? Maybe like Hector, who was on the Human Rights Commission. Instead, he got punched in the face. How is his wife working for the uh, water department? Or I should say, I think at the recycling place. I don't know if she's still there, but at one point she was at the recycling place. She was making $130,000 a year as a supervisor, but she didn't take the civil service. Actually, according to the source, she failed it twice. She failed the civil service exam, but she still had the job. She was still working. I found her over there one day where she ran away from me. So how did she get that job? What experience, what qualifications? 
Is it because she's Zahi Jairus's wife and Zahi Jairus's manages many of our elected officials? But other people, they go and target them and they'll try to fire them for all kinds of reasons, finding things, technical reasons, right? And blame the state. It's the state. No, it's not the state, actually. We spoke to the state. It's at the discretion of the Yonkers Public Schools, in fact. And I see how you guys decided. That's a damn shame. Damn shame. So I hope you're going to treat that employee that was caught having sex in Grand Park, in broad daylight, in his uniform, while on the clock, on the city vehicle. What about that city employee that was caught drinking and driving? There's photo evidence. Is she going to get fired? Is she going to get suspended? What about that DPW supervisor who was driving a DPW vehicle to a bar at night and then driving an hour home? under the influence in a DPW vehicle. There's pictures and video of that. Are you going to fire that man? What about Tasha Diaz? It's known among city officials that she assaulted her dad. Where are the charges? It's known among many people in the city, especially in DPW, of certain individuals, drug abuse, drug dealing. Are they going to get fired? Are they going to get suspended? Why is it that certain people get, uh, you know, fired? Other people don't. You can you can use drugs. You can sexually assault another employee. You can have sex while on the job in broad daylight in a city park, on a city vehicle. You can drive drunk. You can post photos with alcohol while you're behind the wheel taking shots. It's okay. Nothing. No call from HR. No investigation. Still on the job. You can drive drunk. You can hit people, hurt people, get sued. Still keep your job. Get promoted. That's how it is here in the city of Yonkers because we have elected officials that are corrupt. Tasha Diaz has to go. Tasha Diaz needs to be investigated and the feds need to investigate her. That's a fact. And I'm not going to stop. I'm going to continue to nail this home. And I can't wait till more articles come out because they're going to come out. And I can't wait till I start releasing some more information that I have. They have audio from a while back that I haven't released. And um, it's time. We start really, uh, um, you know, hitting it hard. I'm not going to go anywhere. You can continue to try to harass my wife. And by the way, that uh, post by Brian Harry has now been seen by the union president. Right. They actually reached out to my wife about it, saying, what is this? My wife says, this is what I've been going through. I have tried to let people know. No one seems to care. I've been attacked, harassed, online, bullied, threatened. They have information about my wife's employment that's supposed to be private, that no one's supposed to know outside of her and the Board of Education. Yet and still, they're posting that information on social media. How is it that these individuals, Frankie Jarris specifically, and I got the screenshot, knew where my wife was going, knew what the future of that school was going to be. The school is closing down because they're moving to the new school whenever it opens up. But how did he know that? How did Frank Jarris know that? Was he told uh, that information by the city uh, majority leader, city uh, council majority leader, Tasha Diaz, who is his client, who tried to give him a $30,000 contract city contract try to put thirty thousand dollars in his pocket how did he know that tasha was it you the education chair that needs an education herself it's a joke to name you the education chair you lack education you lack any integrity and any morals you're a sellout you prostitute your vote you prostitute that seat. It's time for you to go. And I'm going to be on your ass. I'm going to be on Zahi's ass. I'm going to be on all of you. I don't care. You want to come for us. I'm going to come back for you. And I can't wait to see you guys in handcuffs. I can't wait. I cannot wait to see them in handcuffs. They deserve to be in jail for what they're doing, folks. And we can't forget about how they try to steal money. Anyway, I'm Freddie Vasquez, Basement Politics. 
Uh, there needs to be an investigation. We need to be calling for an investigation. Make sure that you write letters to the Board of Ethics, write letters to the city council, asking them to investigate this, asking them to investigate the housing ordinance vote, asking them to investigate our city council in general, asking them to investigate that term limit extension. That all needs to be investigated. Anyone associated with Zahi Jarris that has been managed by him, where he has donated money to, or they have paid, need to be investigated. And that needs to happen right away. I'm Freddie Vasquez. I'm up out of here. Folks, have a beautiful day. Shout out to the Yonkers Ledger. Keep doing the great work you guys are doing. To all uh, the city of Yonkers, if you have information, email me. Politicwithfred at gmail.com. Politicwithfred at gmail.com. Email me. Let's expose them. You're catching employees having sex out in the park. You're catching them sleeping in their vehicles. Let's expose them. Let's all become auditors. Let's put pressure on them. Capture them in the act. Get the video. Send it to me, not to the Yonkers voice. He's not going to put certain things out. I wonder if he's even talking about this. Not to any other people. If you want it exposed, send it to politicwithfred at gmail.com. Be on the lookout. Let's see who can get the best video, who can get the best audio, right? Who The best picture of one of our city officials, one of these employees doing something they're not supposed to be doing. Let's get on their asses. Shout out to the people that have sent the information, that have sent the pictures, that have sent the video. Thank you. Thank you. And if you want to know who was that uh, candidate for District 1 behind the wheel promoting alcohol uh, while driving, drinking of alcohol while driving, Check it out. I posted on my page. City employee as well. Why is she still employed? Why is uh, uh, 1199 SEIU still endorsing her or anyone else? You're endorsing drinking and driving. You should be ashamed of yourselves. But you don't care, right? You don't give a fuck. It's about yourselves, enriching yourselves. You don't care if a 16-year-old boy was killed by a city employee. You don't care if an elderly man was injured badly on Central Avenue by a city employee. You don't care that a city employee killed himself driving drunk and high. Because you're going to still promote certain candidates, still endorse them, even though they promote drinking and driving because it serves to benefit you. I'm Freddie Vasquez, Basement Politics on Filter. The BOE is not in compliance with the charter. How so? Please let me know. I want all information. If you are a former staff member, former teacher, send me the information, politicwithfred at gmail.com. I think there's a real serious case for a class action lawsuit uh, by black women specifically and black residents of the city of Yonkers who were employed or anywhere who were employed by this uh, uh, Yonkers Public Schools and were fired. Fire before they can reach tenure. A lot of people has that has happened to. So reach out to me. Tell me your story. Let's get it out there. Let's stop this. Politicwithfred at gmail.com. We stop it when we speak about it. The same way we stop that appointment of uh, Christian Jalaj, the son of that investor and a neighbor of Zahi Jerris, in the same way we stop this approval of this contract for $30,000, we can stop it when we speak on it. Enough being afraid. Enough being afraid. We are no longer afraid. We are going to continue to hold you accountable. Send me the information, politicwithfred at gmail.com. And yeah, they are out of compliance with a lot of their IEP students. What about the IEP students? You're worrying about getting rid of people that are an asset that can actually help you get out of your IEP problem but you'd rather let him go because Tasha Diaz has a problem with her husband because Zahi Jarvis has a problem with her husband, right? That's the only reason they're messing with my wife, because of my podcast. She's an asset to the schools. She's an asset to those students. And if you need help with your IEPs, ask my wife. Reach out to us. You need help with your IEP. You don't know where to turn to. You've been fighting the school district to get you the services your child needs. Reach out to me. Politic with Fred at gmail.com. This is my new occupation, getting in their asses. I need your help to do so. Let's all get in their asses. Let's hold them accountable. I'm going to be a fly or a gnat all around them. I'm going to be a thorn in their side. Let's do it, folks. I will reach out to you. Get in compliance with your IEP students, all right? Make sure that the kids can read when they're at a certain grade level and that they're recognizing their letters. That's what you need to be focused on, Tasha. Well, I don't know if you could read yourself.
Because yesterday, if you had any questions for the candidates. Yes, but I thought it was going to be like after we went through the agenda, we would then do interviews. But duh. I'm okay. Uh, duh, I know. Okay. Now she wants great. to be a county she legislator. But I am the bad guy. You sure are, you pedophile. You sure are. Benefit him. Because he doesn't cover. He only talks trash. I like that. I like that. Helen off easy. I want to end this quick because I'm greedy and I want some of the butter chicken. So thank you. But we're going to leave it where it is. Let's vote on this. Let's get it pop. Like I said, political games that are being played. But we're going to leave it where it is. Let's vote on this. Let's get it pop. Like I said, mm. political games. Let's get it popping. Mm. But we're going to leave it where it is. Let's vote on this. Let's get it pop. Like I said, political games that are being played. You could have, like I said. Thank you for watching Basement Politics with my husband, Freddie Vasquez. That's right, baby. Shout out to my wife, Andrea Vasquez. One of the greatest APs out there. If you are a parent of a child in the Yonkers Public Schools and you need assistance, reach out to me, politicwithfred at gmail.com. We will make sure you get the help you need. We understand how to navigate this. And we're going to start putting uh, people on blast. Start getting our foot in their ass. Let's start being vocal. Demand what we want. Demand accountability, accountability here in the city of Yonkers. Demand an end to corruption. Demand an investigation into our majority leader and others who have used this corrupt criminal known as Zahi Jerris and his son, the bag man, who he's going to end up getting them sent to prison as well. Horrible, Dad, but that's what they said. Freddy wins. Fatality. Yeah, this mine.